And how are my listeners doing? We're at Psalms 140, verse 7. Proud to be getting back into the Father's Word and teaching it. O God the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Notes. Now the Messiah attributed to his Father the source of all his strength, and as well during the horror of Calvary, his head or his leadership or his headship was covered and protected by the Father, while the head of the enemy was uncovered and thereby bruised. You can find the first prophetic verse of the Word of God in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Three chapters, and God has already declared a victory over Satan. Just simply not going to happen for the devil. I mean, he's just going to get his he's going to get his butt spanked badly. Verse 8. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Notes. Now, verses 1 through 5 address themselves to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Verses 8 through 11 pertain to the Antichrist and the false prophet. Verse 9. As for the head of those who compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Notes. Well, there is a possibility that da uh, Mr. David was speaking of Absalom regarding his rebellious nature. If so, this passage was fulfilled. It was also fulfilled in the Pharisees and Sadducees who persecuted Christ daily. It will be fulfilled in the Antichrist and the false prophet at the second coming. Verse 10. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Notes. We are told in this passage concerning the Antichrist and his followers that they shall not rise up again. God is going to take care of that little problem, and he's going to do so as only he can. Verse 11. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Notes. Now the evil speaker could have referred to Absalom as well as Judas. Quite frankly, anyone who opposed God. But more particularly, it concerns the Antichrist. He's going to speak all kinds of blasphemies and shake his fist at the God of heaven. That will prove to be a very big mistake. Verse 12. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Notes. Now the words afflicted, poor, righteous, and upright, they all refer to the Messiah. God will maintain no cause except that of the Messiah, so our faith without fail must be in Him. I mean, whenever whenever God looks at the whenever God looks at a man, He either sees Christ in you, or you can go ahead and turn to Psalms chapter one verse four and see what God thinks of you. John chapter fourteen verse six as well. If you don't have Christ in your heart, burnt grass rates higher than you do. Okay, it's as simple as that, and that's his word, not mine. Psalms 141, the author is David. Lord, I cry unto you, and make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto you. Notes. This is definitely a psalm of David, and yet the voice of the Messiah. The tenor of this verse tells us that the Father was the Messiah's total dependence. He sought help only from him him. Verse 2, Let my prayer be set before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Notes. Now, obviously, the incense had to do with the golden altar, with it being offered up at least twice a day. The evening sacrifice took place at 3 p.m., the exact same time that Christ died on the cross. God pays attention. Okay, verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. 
notes. Well, the Messiah is the only one of whom it can be said that his heart was perfect before taught before God, and consequently, everything that came from his lips was edifying and holy. I really wish I could take credit for that whenever I slammed my hand into a car door a couple of days ago. <laughs> what came out of my mouth is exactly what's in my heart. And unfortunately, it's a human heart. Just repent of it and continue on, anyways. Verse 4. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. Notes. The separation from evil which characterized Christ when he was on the earth also characterizes those in whom he dwells. Well, why did Christ hang around with sinners? Well, it's the it's not the well who need the doctor, but the sick. I mean, he didn't go into a bar to drink with his buddies. He went into the bar and sat down in the smoking section in order to talk with people about the love of God. We should be the same. Verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Notes. Now the righteous could only refer to the Heavenly Father or any one of the Trinity. God does not allow fellow Christians to smite each other. There will be a judgment concerning that. Vengeance belongs to him and no one else. It is proper for the Lord to chastise us, but not proper for anyone else to do so. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 through 11. If anyone else attempts to chastise a Christian, calamity will definitely come upon them. You have been warned. Verse 6. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Notes. Now the words, in stony places, in the ancient Hebrew tongue, reads, the hands of the rock. Oh, well, obviously, if it talks about the rock, it, turns, it in turn actually refers to Christ. The religious leaders were always trying to overthrow the rock. And then the common people heard the sweet words of Christ, and they started paying more attention to him than a bunch of religious knuckleheads. That's John chapter 7, verse 46, by the way. Verse 7, Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth, as when one cuts and cleaves wood upon the earth. Notes. Now this passage shows the hatred of man's heart to the Messiah and his followers. Verse 8, Yet my eyes are unto you, O God the Lord. In you is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Notes. Now protection from the judges, which in this case includes the self-righteous Pharisees and Sadducees talked about in verse 6, it can only be given by God. Verse 9, Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me in the gins of the workers of iniquity. Notes. So the hands of the rock of verse 6 overthrew those who had planned that the hands of the snare should overthrow him. The Hebrew word used here shows that the rock is an immovable rock. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. If you're trying to push Christ out of your life... He's going to show up in ways that you may not want him to. He will either show up in your heart or he will show up and judge you. Okay, it's as simple as that. Verse 10. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while that I will escape. Notes. The sense of this verse is that the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the Herodians were caught in their own snares, but the Messiah passed safely through and over them. No problem whatsoever for an almighty God stuffed into a human body still. Psalms 142. We're going to talk about the cave of Adalam. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. Notes. Now even though this psalm right here portrays the heart of David, 
Even more so, it portrays the Messiah when he was shut up in the prison house of Sheol. Sheol, I guess you could say I'm talking about hell, basically. The paradise, the paradise side of hell. Verse 2. I poured out my complaints before him. I showed before him my trouble. Notes. Now, as David poured out his complaints to God, and David's greater son poured out his to the Father, likewise we are to give an example which are, which we are to follow. Verse 3. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. Notes. Now, the sense of this verse is that when the Messiah's spirit was overwhelmed within him, then he was supported by the remembrance that God knew his life of sorrow. Well, this implies con uh, a conscious sinlessness. I mean, he knew he was innocent of everything. He invited God to scrutinize his conduct from the very cradle to the very cross. It was a life of constant and bitter trial, but it was a sinless life nonetheless. He was tested daily by snares laid for him, but he never sinned. Men hated him, but he was unspeakably precious to God. He should be unspeakably precious to us as well. Verse 4, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man who would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto you, O Lord, and I said, You are my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Notes. This speaks of the sad and brutal time whenever Christ actually went to the cross. This, this phrase here, No man cared for my soul, has reference to his dying on the cross and thereby being made a curse by God himself. In reality, while he was made a curse by God, it was not because of his sin, for he actually had none, but because he took all of our sins upon himself and paid the penalty for it. Galatians chapter 3, verse uh, 13, and about a thousand other verses. Okay, Verse 6, Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Notes. Now, shut up in the prison house of Sheol, into which he descended from Golgotha, he trusts, prays, and believes. He cries for deliverance and predicts the triumph which his resurrection will bring to the righteous. Verse 7. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. The righteous shall compass me about, for you shall deal bountifully with me. Notes. Here the Messiah prays that he will be delivered out of the death world. And of course he knows that his prayer will be answered and the subsequent joy that his resurrection will bring to his people. When it says that it is, they are stronger than I, this isn't Christ actually admitting weakness. He's basically telling God that, hey, it's time to get this done. Psalms 143 now. Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications, and your faithfulness answer me, and in your righteousness. Notes. Very similar to that psalm I just read, this uh, psalm does speak of David, but in a greater way it points to the Messiah. And he prays out of the very depths and darkness of Sheol. The Holy Spirit allows us thereby to see inside this very dark moment. And with that being said, we'll have to pick up in Psalms 143, verse 2. Thank you, and God bless. Bye-bye.